In round 5 of Sharjah Master 2018, both games were decided on board number 1 and board number 2. In the game Setsuraman against El Taj Safarli, it was a very interesting battle. Black played French defense. We know that El Taj Safarli is not a French player, but probably he decided to catch his opponent in a very, with a very dire direct preparation. Avoiding, Setsuraman played bishop d2 variation, which leads to equal, I would say, but with different side castle, a complicated position. Around move 15, players start to repeat the moves. And here, we Grandmaster and the Grandmasters and the press center decided that it will be a short Grandmasters game. But after a long thinking, Grandmaster Setsuraman played knight b3, avoiding the threefold repetition. It was a very risky decision because black could start a dangerous attack against white king. Probably around here, Grandmaster Etach Safarli made some unprecise move, trading the queens and went to an inferior endgame. The endgame was clearly better for white thanks to d4 square, better bishop and space advantage. And with a very precise play, here I would like to mention the move bishop b5, rook f1, g4, White limited completely Black's counterplay and with a decisive move G6 broke Black's position. A very nice positional game played by Grandmaster Setsuraman from India. Can you share us some moments or key moments of the game? Yeah, it was a French winner. I didn't uh, expect this from my opponent. Uh, I don't know. In this tournament I already faced uh, French for the second time. So this Bishop D2 was kind of rare move. I mean, it's not uh, so venomous, but uh, it's, I mean, uh, I can get some playable positions. You wanted to avoid, avoid pr direct preparation, most probably. Yeah, yeah I want to avoid this uh, forced lines with Queen G4 and Queen G7, all these stuff. So I want to play some simple... You are playing usually Queen G4 variation, yeah, yeah. and you wanted to avoid it. Yeah, yeah I wanted to avoid, uh, because I didn't check uh, today, and uh, yeah, it can be dangerous if you don't check your lines. So then, yeah, uh, I got this uh, uh, kind of uh, typical position and we repeated moves. But I thought, okay, it's a bit pleasant, I have no risk, so I can uh, continue a bit. And then, yeah, slowly uh, he began to think and he got into some unpleasant uh, problems. Yeah, So then uh, it was a bit smooth for me. I think I showed good technique, yeah. Yeah, it was a really nice game and this uh, typical French torturing. Um, it was, I mean, a very, let's say, similar to game Leko Gurevich from a candidate's match. Same idea, same two rooks and knight and bishop against, and the same structure. So uh, there is always a3 breaking, c3, yeah. advancing yeah. Uh, h, uh, king side pawns. Exactly. Yeah, I can play on two sides, and it's very difficult for him uh, to defend on either side. Yeah, Leko is a kind of uh, expert in this kind of positions and uh, I loved studying his games and then I was, I think I was able to evaluate him today, I think. So what, what what was the mistake? Uh, I think, yeah, he played Queen C7 when I offered exchange of Queens. I think he should have immediately taken Queens rather than waiting and then uh, so uh, I get to improve my position. So probably he should have taken his Queens, uh, I mean exchange the Queens before, but still it's slightly unpleasant but I think it's defendable, mm -hmm. yeah. This was uh, uh, probably he should uh, um, uh, try to play to, to le at least to have some counterplays, some counter chess because end game yeah, yeah. was uh, really a torture. Yeah, yeah. Right. Couple of uh, words about yesterday's your yesterday's games because it was really exciting and uh, probably at some point you missed the rook takes b7 an easy win. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a shock for me when my friend Adiban uh, told me that I missed rook b7 because I was always connected with ideas with rook b5. I'm talking about the morning round, yeah, if, uh, yeah. So I was always connected with ideas of Rook B5, and then suddenly, uh, no, it's just a blackout. I think, yeah. I mean, there's no explanation for this, but yeah, I should not probably a bit time. Maybe I'm a bit tired after Dubai, but yeah, still, yeah, I should not miss move like Rook B7. Yeah. Congratulations! After five rounds, you are the sole leader, yeah. uh, it's, and there is one more game to play. So good luck. Yeah. Thank you so much. In the other game of the leaders between Van Hao and Maksud Luparhan, it was a very unusual opening, very rarely in the tournament practice. As a curiosity, the first game played with this setup was back in 19th century in 1856 
in a game played in India in Kolkata between John Cochrain and Sumarakana. I don't know, maybe Parhan was inspired by these games and he got a really fresh and playable position. Van Hao took the initiative, even he won a pawn and placed a very nice looking the knight on f6. But Parhan was defending with cool blood, especially I would like to mention the move h6 and uh, with bishop spare and be uh, better pawn structures he hoped for a better let's say end game or positional play. Uh, here I would like to say that queen c4 was probably a slight inaccuracy from Van Hao. Instead of it rook to d1 doubling the rook and followed by c4 this move was proposed by Grandmaster Salem during live commentary, was much more in the spirit of the position and White could get very good attacking chances. Uh, after Queen c4, the, after changing the Queens, it was a slightly better for White endgame with pawn up but very difficult to convert. The game was decided in that severe time trouble and here as in the previous games, Parhan was better controlling the situation during the, the mutual time trouble. And he, he, he organized with only three pieces and pawns a very dangerous attack against White King and managed to cage White's Queen. A very, very interesting, very tense game. And I would say that Iranian Grandmaster, he is in a great form. He is only 70 years old and just recently he became a uh, champion of Iran. So round six will be probably a very decisive for the tournament. Two leaders with perfect score five, five out of five are playing. Seturaman from India and Maksudlu Parhan from Iran.